I've always loved the 1vx, taking on a group of players completely by yourself. In a PvP game, there is no advantage as great and as absolute as a numbers advantage, and so turning that on its head feels like the pinnacle accomplishment for a solo player. Nothing expresses one's skill or highlights an outplay better than one man taking on an entire group by himself. Nothing says, I'm better than you, more than one woman beating an entire group single-handedly. So in this series, that's exactly what I've set my sights on. The elusive 1VX. Welcome to One Man Army. The 1VX is, as it should be, very, very challenging. As I mentioned in the intro, there is no advantage greater or more absolute than a numbers advantage. Now, I'm no stranger to the 1VX, I've done it a lot in previous games, but 1VXing in Albion presents a unique challenge. SBI hates the 1VX. Every build ever created for the 1VX has been nerfed into oblivion or changed to a place where it is no longer relevant for it. So in order for me to 1VX, I would first have to create a build to 1VX. Now, I knew that the build had to include roast pork, because it's the single most undervalued, underused, and to be quite frank, completely broken food in the game. I just needed to find a weapon that did good consistent AoE DPS to maximize its effectiveness. First, I tried the Hellbird, then went into the Shadowcaller for a while, but they were both way too inconsistent. Halberd was great versus lots of melees, but lost hard if there were any high DPS ranged builds. Shadowcaller, on the other hand, would be perfect if it wasn't for this godforsaken worthless Q ability that you have to use. Seriously, this ability sucks. So after going back to the drawing board for a while, I settled on the one-handed spear. I know, shocker. But for such a good generalized weapon, it's surprisingly good for 1PX. We'll get more into this later, but for the rest of the build, since I was just testing in 4.1, I wanted a cheap setup. Hunter hood, mercenary jacket, leather shoes, torch, and healing potions. Let me show you how it works. So the fundamental strategy to this style of 1vx is to manipulate space allowing you to take isolated 1v1s. Basically, in simple terms, this just means you want to stay out of the range of as many opponents as possible. Take this really basic example of a 2v1 I did against a bow user and a war gloves user. So to create an isolated 1v1, I want the war gloves user in my range, but the bow player far away so he can't hit me. So as I 1v1 the war gloves user, I back up away from the bow, forcing him to use his movement ability to get in range. Once he gets in range, I reset the distance using my mobility and continue to 1v1 the war gloves. Eventually, the Wargloves realizes that he's not winning, and so he backs off. This leaves the ranged opponent alone and lets me 1v1 him. Now, since I took two winning 1v1s, I'm in a good spot and able to commit to the 2v1 and finish one opponent off using my big cooldowns. I could have been in trouble if the bow decided to stay and fight here with his mercenary jacket, but he just played it safe and ran instead. So as you can see, it's all about keeping one opponent in your range and the rest out of it. This clip shows another important aspect of the 1VX, which is playing with confidence. A lot of the time, you just have to shove a sock down your pants and go for it. In order to win 1VX fights, you have to outplay people and assume they're gonna make mistakes. This fight I 100% should have lost. You can see at this point I'm completely out of resources, but the two opponents that could easily kill me just run away, allowing me to easily finish off my target. Two things that this build can struggle with are healers and mana issues. So for starters, I have sort of accepted that in a 1vx, if there's a healer, you can't do it. 
99% of the time the healer will out heal your damage and so it's simply not even worth trying. You can see that here in this clip where I'm third partying this 2v2 and I'm not even making a dent in this healer. The second issue is that in long fights you can run into energy issues. Now I wasn't using a cape which helps a bit in this clip but as you can see if the fights go long you can start to get a little bit low on mana and there's no really great way to deal with this. Every slot in your build is pretty important so sacrificing one for an energy sustain option isn't ideal. Really though this just limits how long you can fight for so it's something that you can work around. One of the more difficult things I found with this build is knowing when to face tank the group and when to kite. If you just kite and use everything to create space, it's impossible to actually kill people and they'll just run away, so you have to commit in and face tank people at some point. I found that whenever you're face tanking, you absolutely need to either have your hunter hood, mercenary jacket, or resistance potion active, as well as some way to create space afterward like your E or boots coming off cooldown. You can see in this 1v3 I played it well as I'm able to face tank with my hunter hurt first and eat a lot of their damage, and then mercenary jacket later to finish them off, and then respace the last guy with my E before he can finish me. The hardest thing to deal with though is CC. Now there are some changes coming that hopefully make this a little bit better, but if you get hit by CC at a bad time, you sort of just die. Take this clip where I don't get my hunter hood off before the stun hits me and I'm half health before I get to do anything, followed by yet another stun which instantly cancels my W when I'm trying to get my mercenary jacket off. You really have to be preemptive with your defensives and constantly monitoring CC cooldowns. That being said, I think you can really see the strength of the build in this clip because even with all of that and my first E getting purged right before I cast it, I still almost killed two people while being completely outgeared and in a 1v3. That fight was a really rough fight, but look what you can do in a good fight. Check this 2v1 versus two higher IP bloodletters. It ends with me sitting at about as much health as I started with. Honestly, the build testing process was really fun and I got a lot of really good fights, so for the rest of this video I'm just going to play out the rest of the clips I got testing in 4.1. Now I left them in at base speed for those of you that want to try to learn from them, otherwise feel free to speed up the video as 1vx fights are typically taken pretty slowly. But either way, enjoy the clips.
Now, as this last clip finishes playing out, there is a giveaway running in my Discord channel. You can find the link to it in the description. Thanks to SBI and their content creator program, I get codes to give to you guys. So if you want some free stuff, make sure you join the Discord. Anyway, that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.